Fuck Devils. J Dog back for another goddamn fucking video. And check this shit out. Fucking different scenery for you guys. A little different view for the regular Devils that watch my ass in my office every day. I'm out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona right now. Right now, my we're just out here uh, visiting my uh, sister-in-law, which is my wife's sister. So just visiting her and the kids uh, for five days. But by the time that you see this video, I'll be back fucking home. But I had a little bit of downtime, so I figured, hey, gonna go outside on this little fucking patio we have. Record a fucking video for you guys, you know. Keep them all in the archive, because, like, before I left for the trip, I want to make sure I think I had, like, ten videos pre-recorded. So that's all be posted while I, was, while I was gone here now. But any fucking way, videos are piling up now. So I've been posting them since I haven't done a video recorded in about five days now. Like I said, a ton of pre-recorded. So I'm getting behind on the videos again, which is a good thing, because it keeps plenty of fucking content. And I did notice, too, I want to say uh, as well, guys, I kind of gave you a... a I said it before in a video, I've noticed some questions, like some of the videos I already did, I kind of overlooked a question or two, or some new ones come in, because kind of, some come through my email, like it says YouTube, you know, you got a uh, new message or whatever, but I, like it doesn't do that for everyone, so I don't fucking know. But anyways, uh, if it's a question that gets overlooked or whatever, it's, it's probably for that reason, I just didn't see it, or because like I said, I'm just skimming along this fucking shit phone, I don't even have a fucking iPhone, I have a, what is this, a fucking, Android? I don't even know, whatever the fucking other thing is, the crappier version, that's, that's I mean, a step above a flip phone. Well, the point is, if I overlook a goddamn question, just keep answering, asking it, and I will answer it, for sure. So, with no further fucking ado, here we go, from Metal Musician 6996 who comments on every goddamn fucking thing, it seems like. Awesome, awesome J-Dog, thanks for the reminder, I just ordered that, oh, because this is the, uh, just so you guys know, we're on the, uh, Empire is finally here, the Divine Empire, uh, LP. If you didn't get it, go fucking get it, motherfuckers, you're missing out if you didn't. Uh, awesome J-Dog, thanks for the reminder, I just ordered that Divine Empire LP. And a $3 funerist CD. Yeah, actually, I saw that order come through, so thanks for that, bra bra. Question. That's what I'm here for, too. Have you ever seen a band live that you were looking forward to and then they were just okay live or not very good? For example, I was at a death metal festival in Vegas seeing Mortician and Malignancy, and I remember Mortician used a drum machine live, and it seemed like Will was having trouble staying on time. It kind of just seemed like he didn't even want to be there. <laughs> That's just Will every fucking show, man. It's been like that since... First time I saw Mortician, like I said, was in, it was October of 99. And he's pretty much been the same. And I've even seen earlier videos, like on YouTube and shit, like what, early 90s and stuff. And he's a fucking same persona. I just think that's Will. You know what I mean? He's like that on and off stage. Uh, it was a decent show, and I met Roger and hit at, at his record store and got stuff signed. But it just seemed like Will was having an off night. I don't think it's an off night. I think it's a normal fucking Will night. Uh, bands and I wanted to see that I was disappointed by. I was never disappointed by Mortician, but I can see why someone would not. Let's. I don't want to say anything bad because like Mortician, Mortician's literally one of my favorite bands. But let's call it like it is. They're not a very good live band. They're just a kind of like I like seeing them live, and I'm looking forward to seeing them. And uh, I think they're coming here in September. And I do have tickets to that. Contacted Emma, who owns uh, the club. Uh, no class now, which she's a friend of mine, so she just sent over tickets, so I'll be at that Devils for sure, because a couple people asked me in previous videos uh, about going to Mortician. I'm definitely going to Mortician. Me and my wife got uh, tickets. She just forwarded me tickets uh, two days ago, actually. I got tickets to that. I'm loving Creation, and I think it was Internal Bleeding. I think it was the other show, which I didn't even know they were playing, uh, and I, I forget when that is, but well, def I'll for sure be at the Malevolent Creation and Mortician. So anyways, uh, Mortician, I'm the only always reason I like seeing them is just because I love their songs so much, and I know them very, very well, so anytime, I'm always kind of like Almost as curious, to, like, I don't even want to see the set list in advance. I kind of want to, just off the cuff, what song they play, like, when he announces it, or see if I know it without him announcing type of shit. It's kind of, like, more like that. But it's just, yeah, Will's just, that's just Will. That's his persona. He just stands there. Roger, well, Roger's um, hit or miss. Sometimes he's either playing guitar, like you said, with a drum machine. I've seen it both. But I do prefer my, when, um, my preferred lineup for uh, Mortician. I don't know how it's going to be in September. So hopefully this is my favorite, is when it's Will on bass and vocals, Roger on uh, drums, when he's actually playing drums. And then uh, Ronnie from Malignancy plays guitar. I've seen that lineup several times, too. The very first time I see Mortician, it was fucking, um, you know, Will, bass vocals, Roger on guitar, and it was on drums. Uh, was his name George? Is this uh, the guy from Dehumanized, who's on the Prophecies Foretold, uh, which I, you know, it's funny, that first Dehumanized disc, I, I don't even know, is it considered an album, or is it kind of like an embalm, or there was blood everywhere, like two demos on one, I think it is? I always consider it just an album, but Prophecies, Prophecies Foretold. I fucking love that disc. And to this day, even like that, I want like hells to put it out on vinyl. So I've already got a contact for a few, like rotting contact me guys and shit like that. So these videos are going well. Like I'm getting contact from out of the woodwork. Uh, so if anyone for fucking uh, dehumanize sees this, Hell's Headbangers wants to put out uh, 
De- I mean, Hell's Headbangers wants to release Dehumanized, the prophecies foretold on violence. So get in contact with me, goddammit. Put in the comments or something to ask around. Service at Hell's Headbangers is the goddamn email. That's what I answer all the time. Service at Hell's Headbangers.com. So you can email me there, too. And uh, the, the, the comeback album, whatever it was, I didn't like that. So I wasn't interested in that. But uh, anyways, I think I think his name was George, which I actually brought that to the Mortician show. And I had him sign that. He played drums for Mortician. That you know, Maybe that wasn't. Maybe the first year they did use a drum machine, but that was another lineup I seen it. The first show, or maybe it was the second show I seen them. Maybe it was, yeah, maybe the very first year they did do a drum machine. But there was another lineup when I saw it was uh, George or whoever the fuck his name is. I, I forget. The, the goddamn dehumanized drummer. He was doing drums for them. I thought he did a really good job, too. And actually, I love his drums on that fucking disc. And then it was Will and Rogers. So those are the other lineups. So I have seen him with the drum machine. Yeah, not as good, but um, I prefer the. Uh, the lineups are the same. And uh, as far as other bands, like, because you mentioned more to the bands that I was looking forward to seeing that I was disappointed by. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank, but they're, fuck, I want to get, I want to throw out somebody because there definitely has been where I kind of thought they were boring or, um, and I definitely seen fucking bands that I thought were boring as shit live, but I kind of wasn't having expectations either. I, the first time I saw them or was hearing of them and, but bands that I like too. I'm trying to think of somebody that I was like, kind of like pumped, like fuck yeah, I gotta go see him, and you go see him, and they're like somebody that tip of my tongue, and I know it's somebody like maybe vocally or something, like their vocals didn't sound anything like the album. I know I've had that, and I can't think of who. Uh, yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, maybe he'll come come to me uh, in the middle of another question. Uh, maybe somebody will set, ask about a band or something. I'm like, oh, them. I'll get I'll get to the, get back to it if it comes pops my mind. But I know they're for a fact. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, look for a sandwich. Like, yeah, that wasn't too good. Carpenter Corpse asking me a question. Do you like Black Curse? Uh, I'm trying to think. Did I listen to it? That was that, uh, yeah, I did. Because we got the LPs and they were something. I thought it was okay. Um, it was definitely selling very, very well when it came out. And I wanted to check it out. And uh, I think even like maybe for whatever reason, because I didn't know much about it. I, mean, I searched on YouTube and there was a bunch of reviews of people talking about it. I, I thought it was okay. Um, but I noticed that there was a lot of people that like fucking loved it. So... I wasn't as excited as apparently everybody else. From Eric R. Hey, I, hey, I dog. <laughs> Any plans for HH to do another calendar? Oh, fuck. I forgot all about the goddamn calendar. I remember getting one about a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, it probably was about a decade ago. Fuck, it was the longest shit. Which came with a flexi single by Nunslaughter. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't even remember what song. Yeah, it was a single flexi for Nunslaughter. I forget what song was even on there. Can't even remember, to be honest with you. Each month featured a different band. Yep, I remember that. As far as I can tell, it was a one-off thing, but I think it would be a good annual thing to have available. I agree. Uh, Not a bad idea. I'll throw it out to Eric and Chase. A good annual thing. Yeah, keep fucking Hell's Reminder like a goddamn McDonald's logo on everybody's fucking wall. You know, you get a fucking free calendar with an order and just reminds you of the company and, you know, nothing else looks fucking cool rather than some... Cheesy ass fucking Walmart calendar that has God knows what on it, right? Yeah, uh, very good idea. I'll, I'll, I kind of forgot about it, and um, I think that's what we did. Did we even sell them? I think I think we just gave them out for free. Maybe if you, I think it was maybe like place an order over a hundred dollars, get a free calendar. Because yeah, like I said, it was a nice calendar, and it came with the um, yeah, flexi, like you said. Uh, maybe we sold some too. If you just wanted to buy that, maybe I mean it was eight bucks or something. I don't remember. Like you said, I was about a decade ago. I was about that. Maybe maybe longer. It seems yeah. Definitely well. Totally forgot about that. But good idea. I'm gonna fucking throw it out the goddamn uh in the idea then. An older devil in here, Kevin King. I remember buying that CD when it came out in '97 or so. Gonna have to order the vinyl. Sure do, brah brah. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it, brah. Uh, Life Eternal, man, seeing Emperor at 99 must have been awesome. Have you seen a lot of those legendary Norwegian black metal bands? Um, not a lot. I mean, I've seen Satyricon. That was on Rebel Extravaganza, so they're already kind of like, I don't think that album's terrible, but I definitely, like, eh, it's kind of like, I definitely liked it better when I was like, wouldn't that come out? In 2000, I think. So I was like 15. I liked it better than I actually went back and listened to it recently. I'm like, it doesn't suck, but this is kind of, uh, it's not great. <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, so them, I've seen them. I mean, obviously, I've seen Mayhem, but years and years later. I was, the first time I was supposed to see him was on the Grand Declaration of War. 
remember I told you guys that story, Exum opened for him, but they canceled, and Exum just played for free. So I would have seen um, Mayhem in, two, I believe that was 2000 as well, but they canceled. Um, who else? Well, Immortal. I've seen Immortal. I show my uh, picture of a bath. Just check out that video. I've seen Immortal two times? In the 2000s? Yeah, two, two, or three, two or three times. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, from uh, the Norwegian game. I'm drawing a blank and see a few others. Um... Yeah, I can't think of any of them. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, uh, not of the yeah, the, all the originators. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, I've never seen Burns on the movie. I mean, obviously, but um, yeah, can't, I mean, there probably is somebody else that I'm not thinking of on top of my head. But uh, those are the one that I can't think of anybody else. But yeah, I mean, those are the ones I've definitely seen. From Layla Lover 90, maybe I am crazy, but I honestly thought Divine Empire Redemption had Glenn Benton as a guest vocalist until I realized that it was just how Jason's vocals sound to me. Disagree? Uh, I mean, I, I I guess I can kind of see that. I mean, I only disagree just because of the fact that, I mean, I got that in the time. So, like I said, I bought that CD in 99. It was just on the, uh, at the show with uh, Emperor. So, to me, I just know it from the day, and I've always been, you know, Deicide was one of the first death metal bands I got into. So, I've kind of always known their history. Like, I remember when it got announced... For when the Glenn was doing Vital Remains, which Vital Remains to Christianize. I really like that album. The second album, Icons of Evil, it's eh, it's okay. I think it's kind of boring. Uh, honestly, that's what I think a majority of fucking Vital Remains catalog. I think it's none of it sucks. I just think a lot of it's just kind of just just kind of boring, to be honest with you. Uh in fact, my two favorite um Vital Remains albums that I, the only one the only two I kind of actually really listen to, well, three things is uh Dechristianize. Forever Underground, and I like that Horrors of Hell CD, which is their seven inch of what two demos. Even like Let Us Pray, and uh, what's the second album with the Wolves and the shit on the fuck cover? Um, uh, the set, whatever the fuck, the second album. I'm drawing a blank, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's like great, it's good, two wolves. Um, it, it's all okay. I'm just like, eh. And uh, with the uh, Dawn of Apocalypse, it's just like, just doesn't really do much for me. It definitely doesn't suck. It's just kind of background death metal that's just like kind of nothing there. So, um, I just knew when Glenn did that, and but I guess kind of. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, with the uh, Jason's kind of like high screams and his vocals kind of like monotone, kind of like Vader. I guess yeah. Even first Dia side, I say like what's well, not so much a growl. It's kind of more of a just a death metal distinguishable voice. If that makes any sense, kind of like this guy has a voice like as opposed you're talking like a classic rock band, but it's death metal. But it's not like just an uh, artificial growl. I don't know. Kind of hard to. Like, I guess that is kind of cool when you think about it. Like first Dia side, Vader. Um, maybe even like deceased to an extent. It's kind of like a um, almost like a natural death metal voice that makes sense. That's not like artificial. Kind of possessed seven churches as well. Yeah, I would, I would put possessed seven churches in as well. Yeah, things like that where it's kind of like because most death metal vocals it's kind of like you know just just it's forced and artificial, which is what I love. You know, I mean, I love you know obviously cannibal suffocation. All those brutal vocals, mutation, inhalation, incantation, all that, but it's obviously not the guy's fucking voice in a sense, singing voice in a sense. Not that Divine Empire Jason's voice is walking around, you know, it sounds like that, but you know what I mean? It's just more of like. So I guess I guess I could kind of see that, but I never thought that, no. I never was like, fuck, is that GB behind the mic? I never thought that, but I guess, now that you said it, I kind of see where you're coming from. And what the fuck here? We got a second goddamn question. He left two comments. By Layla Lover 90. You just couldn't get enough of this goddamn did. Uh, if you could have one instrument signed by a member, what would it be? Well, I don't own any instruments. So, actually, no, well, I do. Well, kind of. I'll give that a second. I would like a guitar signed by Matt Harvey or Joel Bryan. Hey, that's a good pick. Uh, I like both those guys. I like both those guys musically and personally. Also, maybe a drum signed by Dave McCraw. Uh, well, so, I don't actually own any instruments. The closest thing that I have is I have a few drumsticks. I have a Candle Corpse drumstick signed by Paul. And I have a Cryptopsy drumstick Signed by uh, Flo. I definitely own those two because I caught, you know, at the show. They threw it out, you know, you know, they throw out the drumsticks. I, I was the one that caught it. And uh, at the end of the show, I had them sign it. When I met them and got my uh, picture with them and had them sign my albums as well. So I have those two things. I have them to this day. Who knows? Maybe next time I'll show my motherfucking camera. Obviously, I don't have them with me here in Phoenix, fucking Arizona. I didn't pack them up for obvious fucking reasons. From Sumo Death. 
It's a question I never really thought about. Divine Empire is some good shit. Do you know any death metal bands that use corpse paint? Only two I can think of right now is Hate and Belphegor, as well as Vital Remains Early Days. Hate and Belphegor, they're both from Poland, right? Belphegor's from Poland, right? Pretty sure they are. Hate definitely is. So it's kind of ironic you said that. They both use corpse paint as death metal. Other death metal bands that use corpse paint? Yeah, no, I can't really think of any. Uh... And the ones that you can kind of say that death metal, like let's say like Morbosa or something like that, uh, they all cross that kind of black and death war metal type stuff. Like obviously those bands, you know, Arch Code, et cetera. But as far as just like a death metal band, it uses corpse paint. No, I honestly can't think of one. Yeah, no, I never really thought, like, like I thought this was a pretty good question. I never even thought about it. Put in there, Devils. Is there another, like, a straight-up death, not like a death black war metal or death black, you know what I mean? If it's just straight-up kind of like, Belphegor, I guess you can kind of say it has a black and touch in there, but I would I would kind of consider them much just straight-up death metal. Hate, I pretty much consider straight-up death metal. So, yeah, those would be two qualifiers. Vital remains are early, yeah. So, same thing. Um, so, yeah, if you know of another just pure straight-up death metal band, where's course Let me know. So, yeah, I can't fucking think of anybody else. Yeah, nobody else is coming to mind. Holy shit, got a motherfucking essay over here. I don't really question, it's kind of a fucking essay just telling me his whole life history, I guess, so I'll leave that one out because there's not really much for me to say about it. Ricky J, that's really nice and good album. What's a standout track for that one? You know what? It's funny because I've thought about that several times. Um, the first song, Hidden Hatred, it's kind of like I I put that album in there kind of like with some albums. Like if I think about like a heavy metal album for all the cla for all the classic guys out there that could be just ask about it sometimes. Like, for example, the Dio Holy Diver. I'm really a big fan of that. I can never think what my favorite song on the albums. I think every song on there is like equally good. But like for the Divine Empire, uh, yeah, Witness the Terror, um, I, like every song, like I can't think like the words. I, I think they're all, yeah, almost like equal. Like it's like just all stand, just like, just all unique and good. As opposed to like some albums, I could just easily pick out a favorite song. You know what I mean? Um, even some albums that I really really like. For example, like uh, Incantation, Outward of Golda. I love that album. I think it's a fucking ten. But I can easily pick my favorite song, which is Tomorrow Death. Um, but at the Divine Empire, I can't really pick a favorite song. I kind of because I have actually thought it. Because uh, almost like. Every song that comes out, I'm like, I think this might be my favorite. The next one goes on, and it's, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I just, I think it's a perfect fucking record. So if you haven't heard it, I highly recommend it. Yeah, Mushroom Lake. Hopefully, uh, Last Days of Humanity, Ranch of Juices will be next. It's coming, brah, brah. It's coming. It's just these, it's these plant times. They suck, but it's been submitted ages ago. So, who knows? It shouldn't be that much longer. When did I say that it was submitted? Um... I'm trying to think, maybe June, July, something seems like that, right? And if it, the plant basically says one year, so maybe it was before that, but it was uh, it was definitely last year. It was for sure last year, 2021. So um, it'll be out. It should definitely be out this year, no matter what, because it's yeah, like I said, it's at the press, literally paid. So we just kick back and wait for it at this point. <laughs> uh, Shane Rosenke, <laughs> AJ Dog, I have a question. Whatever happened to Demonic Christ? I have no fucking idea what's going on with them, man. I mean, um, I never met them personally or whatever, but even, like, the stuff that we're supposed to do or whatever, uh, talking, I think it was Chase that set it up or talked to them. Um, I have no idea. Like, I literally have no fucking clue. And it's like, because stuff's, like, supposed to, like, the, like, I remember talking about doing stuff. I was like, it's been years now. And, like, nothing's even come of it. And I remember the reason I kind of thought it's because a couple of people have asked me the last few years, oh, when's this happen or whatever. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And then we're still, like, this, we're 2022. And I'm like, yeah, even you're asking now. I was like, I have no fucking idea. Um yeah, I think even like because Chase was the one that was in contact with them. I don't even think he fucking knows. Really, I think it's yeah, he pops in every once in a while and he just gets the same old "it's coming" bullshit. You know what I mean? So who the fuck knows? Anyways, that was the last goddamn questions. Yeah, for the Empire's finally here goddamn video. So just under uh, thirty minutes, you know, just under twenty actually. So even better. So yeah, that's it for this one, Devils. Maybe I'll get another goddamn video or so shot here out in fucking Phoenix. And like I said, by the time you see this one, I'll be fucking back home in fucking Ohio and uh, shooting them in as normal. But until then, leave the goddamn questions and comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.